All right, so um, it's true. I turned down DoorBot, as you may know, Ring on Shark Tank. The company that uh, actually sold to Amazon for over $1 billion. But here is why I passed, because I think that he was asking too much. That's what I think. I think he agrees with me, Jamie, the founder, and I think that I didn't see the vision. Simple as that, right? Um, so sharks don't know everything. Uh, again, when you go on to Shark Tank, it is not about if we judge if uh, you have a good investment or not. Is it a good investment for me? So before I dive into this video, make sure that you subscribe so you can see all the rest of my Shark Tank inside the pitch video. So here I go, checking out Jamie from Ring. To ensure you always know who's at your front door. Who's there? It's Jamie. Here to pitch. Who? It's Jamie. Come in. Sharks. Wouldn't it have been nice to know who was behind the door before you let me in? With my product, you can. My name is Jamie Siminoff. I'm from Los Angeles, California. My product is the DoorBot. I'm seeking $700,000 for a 10% stake in the company. 700K? Consumers are currently spending billions of dollars outfitting their homes million with dollars. that work with smartphones. However, one of the most ubiquitous technologies, the doorbell, has not changed since it was invented in 1880. Until now, introducing the DoorBot, the first ever video doorbell built for the smartphone. With DoorBot, you can see and speak with visitors from anywhere. But I didn't invent DoorBot just to make our lives more convenient. It also adds needed security. Let me show you. Mark, let's just say this is your house in Dallas. You'll see on the screen here that I'm projecting the DoorBot app for my smartphone to make it easier to see the demo. Now, just like a regular call, when someone rings the doorbot, you can see them and decline if it's a, someone that you don't want to talk to, or accept and say hello to your visitor. Think of it as caller ID for your front door. <laughs> ah! <laughs> hey, good looking doorbot guy. Hey, Mark, it's your good friend, Mr. Wonderful. I wanted to have you join me on this deal with DoorBot. I think we can get them to go all royalties and no equity. <laughs> Mark, we know that no real entrepreneur is going to accept that deal. And now you can tell Mr. Wonderful to scram. And the best thing is you can do it without having to be face to face with him. Now, sharks, join me. And the next time you hear, it'll be. Now, who wants to be first to ring my bell? All right, now, so uh, it, it, it's obviously the, uh, something that is normal to all of us today in this day and age, right? But I'm not sure how long this pitch was. Maybe this pitch was 10 years ago. So immediately, you know what's, what's going on in my head, right? It's going on that, um, wait a minute, I got to set up another camera, more wires uh, for just a simple doorbell. And now how do I get it over to my phone? So first of all, I'm already dealing with that mentally because at that time we didn't have as many features where it was and I barely had, I'm still, I still can't even get my stereo to work on my TV to work. How do I get my TV off of here and then onto there? And anyway, so I'm already, I'm, I already have anxiety. Jamie, what if you hit accept? You then hit accept, happens? then the light goes blue and then you can talk to them. So your voice comes out of it? Your voice comes out of it. It's got a microphone and speaker, like so it's two-way audio, one-way video. If someone came up and said, hmm, eyeball there, can they just take it off? Because all burglars ring the doorbell first. <laughs> yeah. You know what, though, Mark? That's actually true. Burglars are not usually violent criminals. They want to see if someone's home. They want the opportunity to go into a house that's not, that does not have people in it. So it's actually true. Point. People do ring the doorbell. It's very hard to remove. And we also have offered that any customer that has one stolen, we will replace it for free of charge. And how much does each one of these units sell for? $199. $199. What are your cost to make it? Not bad price. Uh, $81.83 is our cost landed in our uh, warehouse in the United States. And you sell it to retailers? So far, we've only sold direct on our own online store. Uh, we are launching with our first retailer in November, uh, which is Staples. 
We launched nine months ago. We've done uh, in aggregate a million dollars in sales so far. Good for you. And You've done a million dollars so far? Wow. And the last month, we've done $250,000 in sales. Our sales have grown month over month. All online, Jamie. All online, all direct. Do you have any competitors? Currently, we do not have any direct competitors. When I say direct, we are... All right, now, so if you're making it at $81, you're selling it for $199. If you're selling it to the retailer, remember, the retailer always wants to sell it at what we call Keystone Plus 2. That means that the retailer wants to basically, you have to sell it to them at 100, so they sell it at basically 200. If you're making it at 80 some odd dollars, well, you're only making $20 per unit. And that has nothing to do with, he's saying how much he's making for it. It has nothing to do with advertising, marketing, blah, blah, blah. So immediately there, there's a challenge. Now we all do know that bringing down, uh, doing more volume will bring down the majority of the price. But at that time, there wasn't a lot, a lot of online conversion the way that there is today. Um, but that price is, is gonna be something where me and my world, I'm going, wow, I'm electronics. How can I get that camera? It's a camera. You're only gonna wanna improve the the connectivity, the the lens and all that other stuff. How am I going to get that down from 80 something dollars to approximately $50 to sell at that retail price? That's something that's going on. The first video doorbell built for the smartphone. Now there are other video doorbells out there that go to a, a panel. It's not two way, so you don't have communication from that. You can just How see who's there. How much does your competition now, cost? I, the lowest price camera would be, you know, fifty to a hundred dollars, up to thousands of dollars for some of these systems. But we're not trying to compete with the hundred thousand dollar systems that integrate cameras and everything in your home. That's that. That to me is a totally different market. What we're trying to do is disrupt that market it. to give that to everybody. The to give it to my wife who's at home, who's in the bedroom with my five-year-old. I'm away, and at eight o'clock at night and it's dark out, someone knocks on the door. I like the product, but are there bigger solutions that can come in and kind of push this out the door? This category will exist. I mean, the doorbell will stay there. It doesn't get trumped See, by technology. I we'll think drive that change. There's a thousand different ways to alert. What business is not gonna get replaced by future technology? But the, here's the it's, problem. It's about being able to be nimble. You know, when he talks about the doorbell being replaced by technology, that is true. But at that point I was thinking, well, a lot of kids pull up to homes and they just call people and say, I'm outside. So it kind of already exists, right? Why would they be ringing a doorbell? That's what I was, I was thinking at the time. But actually Amen. be part of that change. I'm gonna Smart. jump in here. I think that you have potential to do a lot more with this but I'm not connecting to that this does enough at this time to distinguish itself as different from what else is out there on the market for the higher price point. And so for that reason, I'm out. I get Lori being out on that, you know, because as, she, as we he starts to talk about the, the, the distinguishing of it in um, other markets, if you ever seen Scarface or other things, right? They have their kind of like their console TV and then they got all these other uh, cameras around it and we're still thinking like, back then when, when when people were using those type of things. We're not comparing ourselves to a, a, a cheap video doorbell that has a little tiny... No one's know, arguing panel. the quality of the product. I like it. I think you're going to do great with it. But I've got to be able to say, you know what, when I jump in, I've got to add enough value that this company, instead of being worth $7 million, can be worth $80 million, $90 million. I just don't see that progression. And for that reason, I'm out. $1 billion. It went to $1 billion. All right. In the largest database in the world. So Mark did like it. So, you know, this is not that Mark, the tech guy, he just didn't see the scalability. I don't know why, but because Mark does really play in that area. But, you know, now I'm sitting there going, wait a minute, the tech guy just said uh, he's out. Um, it's a $7 million ticket. When I, when I look at businesses, I look at the three tiers that could hit, luxury, mid-tier, and lower tier. Now, obviously, we understand the luxury market where we have the twenty dollars and $30,000 systems and all that type of stuff. That's not for that. The mid-tier is the ADTs of the world that most likely will just add this to their services in some sense. I, I'm wrestling with where this goes in the market. I just don't think it's for me. I'm out. All right, so here was my reasoning. Um, why didn't the ADT or any of those kind of companies absorb this company? Um, and an Amazon saw the future in this. So I was thinking, well, you know what? You're not going to go against the big ones, right? And you don't want to make a super cheap one, right? Because, uh, you know, 
Now you have the people of the world, like the ADTs and all those who are in so many homes already that for $7 million worth of technology, just flip it on. They can really hurt, uh, you know, Jamie and Ring and Dorbot, but they didn't do it. They just didn't do it. As simple as that. It's kind of a blockbuster who should have been with Netflix, right? They just did not do it. I didn't understand why. And I was thinking, I go in with a $7 million ticket and somebody goes, oh, look, we just added this. Because he already said this existed in various ways. And But, but I'll be very honest. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, that's the only reason I'm on. I didn't see it. I didn't see that you could be connecting neighborhoods together. Um, I didn't see how, uh, you know, people would patrol off of these various things, how there would be lights and other sensors around it. I just saw that, first of all, even if it was to the level of success that I thought it would get, that an ADT or somebody would absorb it and just do it themselves, right? Uh, so uh, I'm not going to lie. I act like I know it, knew it all, but it was also a very high ticket, you know, item to jump in. Security guy. So the idea of having another access point at, on my house like that freaks me out a little bit because all those ADT and all those other ones are hardwired. I can't hack into those, right? So I think you've priced a lot of value into it, but I think my real struggle with it is it's really not an internet play. It's a consumer device that you're pricing at $199. That, that price point is going to start dropping quickly as your volumes go up. For that reason, I'm happy. All right. Now I got Mark Cuban. I got Mark Cuban and the, one of the top cyber crime experts in the world, both out. So now I'm feeling real good about my decision. Royalty structure. Am I going to regret that, Mr. Wonderful? <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like Kevin uh, is in a little bit or interested. Four sharks are out. Kevin is Jamie's last chance at a deal. Jamie, let's take stock of what's happened here. You made a few jokes about Mr. Wonderful at the beginning and about the royalty structure. Am I going to regret that, Mr. Wonderful? The only person left is Mr. Wonderful. You know, I don't even remember what he valued the company at, but I would say at $1 million over a year and $250,000 in annual uh, year-to-date sales, I would say that... Kevin should value the company at approximately, I would say, because of the unknown, um, I would give it a two and a half to three million dollar valuation. Um, he's asking seven hundred thousand dollars for ten percent to puts him at a seven million dollar valuation. Um, basically cutting it a little bit more than half, so it would basically be four because he has to get the seven hundred thousand dollars. I would say Kevin should offer uh, basically 25%. I do remember, I think Kevin had a royalty on this or not, but I'm going to give it a three mil to a three and a half million dollar valuation. Let's see um, what Kevin's offer is. I totally forgot. I'll make you an offer. I'll give you $700,000. I want a 10% royalty. That drops down to seven after I recoup the 700,000 and I get 5% of the company's equity today. You know, we, we have a, a vision, I think, to build a, a big company out of this. And I'm, I can't give ten, someone 10% of all of our sales because it'll bleed us of cash while we really need it the most. So he wants 10% of the sales, um, a 10% royalty, and then it drops down to 7%. That means that if he sold a million dollars, he would have to give uh, Kevin O'Leary $100,000 of that. And then every million dollars, he, well, up until 700,000. So he would have to do uh, uh, basically $7 million in sales, right? $7 million in sales. And then he would pay back Kevin O'Leary um of the out of that right and then after that he would have to pay seventy thousand dollars per million dollars in sales for the rest of his life um uh so what that does is if you are thinking about a company where you let's say you hopefully will make uh 20 25 percent of um 
you know, net off of what you sell. Um, Kevin is trying to basically take one third uh, or a little bit less than a third of your free cash flow, your free profit without having to do anything besides the initial loan. Um, and then after that, in the event of a sale, uh, he would already have 5% of the company. So Jamie would have basically had to give, uh, Kevin, uh, if he would have sold the company, he would have, he would have sold it. He would have probably had to give Kevin $50 million on that sale. Um, but it also would have hindered the initial growth of the company because he wouldn't have been able to put that, um, that 10% initially and or 7% um, back into the company. So would have been a tough decision. I think that maybe Kevin could have taken that down to maybe 2% of, uh, of uh, perpetuity um, and uh, probably kept the 5%, but he would have gotten his money back, which is technically a loan because there would have been no interest on it, but it would, the money back, but he would have then uh, taking back uh, 2% instead of 7 and I think probably he would have gotten to 5 and uh, that probably would have been a good deal. Timmy. I'm basically providing you factoring capital. You need my 700000 for inventory. But, but respectfully, I can raise that money through venture debt or line of credit or something else. So. Then why, don't you, the kind of why don't you counter me with a venture debt off? So I would do $700,000 for a 10% interest rate with a 3% equity kicker. No, not interested. Yeah, so like I said, 700, 10% interest rate, 3% kicker. I said 2% kicker, 10% um, interest rate. I mean, at that time, I think the the that was almost fair value. But, you know, you know, for a shark to get into a deal and put all that money at risk, because you don't hear about the people who lose the money, right? Who knows when he would have gotten back the 10%. So he would have put $700,000 at risk for basically $70,000. That would have been the profit uh, on the interest would have been about that. I mean, of course, if he paid it, you know, fairly quickly in the amount of time. So you would put $700,000 at risk for what? Seventy thousand dollars. I don't. I don't think they can come to an agreement on that. Um, and then three percent on the value of the company. Um, you know, and that's only three percent on when profits or excuse me, uh, you know, distributions happen. What if they don't distribute the money for ten years because they keep putting the money back in the company? So now you made maybe seventy thousand dollars and a hope and a dream that you would make a uh, three percent in the event they distribute the money. So that's how you look at it from Kevin's standpoint. That doesn't, it, that, it's not, doesn't, it's not commensurate with the risk I'm taking. Honestly, I do appreciate the offer, but at the same time, that money that you'd be taking on the royalty, I need to reinvest back in this business. What's the difference between the interest and the royalty? The interest is cheaper. The interest I can get yeah. rid of. You I can, can get... pay you back. Oh, so you don't like the, the royalty and perpetuity aspect. Absolutely. But I took the risk up front. I believed in you. The only You see what he said. He said, you know, what's the difference between the interest and the royalty? There's a big difference, right? The interest is something you can get rid of. You can't get rid of this 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 this, this royalty that will remain with you forever. You have now taken on a partner that at that point, after the money is paid back, that partner has no risk at all, right? Uh, you know, you can you can distribute 5000 or $50 million, but that partner is getting that royalty off of the top. They don't care what happened in your business. They could not care less. If you sell $100,000, you sell a million dollars worth of stuff and they have 7% or 5% or 3%, they get their you know, 50000 70000 uh, It doesn't matter. And you can have bad days, good days. It doesn't matter. They get paid. Uh, the royal, the interest you can maybe take out another loan if you had to at a lower amount or just pay it off really quick and get rid of it. I believed in you, the only shark I might add that did. 700,000 is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Absolutely, it's, it's a lot of money. Okay, Jamie, it's that moment when I say you're dead to me because you don't want to take my offer. I made you a very valid offer, I think, under the circumstances. Respectfully, Mr. Wonderful, we're gonna decline. Go kick some ass, Jamie. Thank okay. you. Good, good luck, Jamie. Yeah, good luck. Thanks, sharks. Kevin, he was uh, 
Why? He was wavering. There was a moment where he actually considered it. I would have done that to you. Whatever happened to peeking through the window and saying, go away? <laughs> there you have it. So, um, so to, to, to put a button on the rest of that story, I will see Jamie over the next couple of years over when I'm at QVC or HSN. I actually bought the product for a lot of friends for Christmas. I think that indicated that it could be a great product. But it doesn't necessarily mean that when you like a product that is something that you want to invest in. Jamie would come on to the show later on and be a guest shark and do absolutely amazing. He is still doing amazing. I do call him once in a while and see how he's doing and, uh, you know, chop it up. Um, and uh, but by the way, he went out to the market and he did reduce his ask. I do believe Jamie owes us about 5% for so gently tenderizing him in the market. But here we are today and Ring is, uh, you know, saving people the lives, protecting people. Jamie is a visionary. By the way, don't ever get discouraged when the Sharks or anybody else don't see your vision. If everybody saw your vision, you would have what we call the lowest common denominator. All right. So if you ever want to see more of this type of stuff, make sure you subscribe to see all of my behind the scenes Shark Tank pitch inside the pitch breakdown videos and i'll see you next time damn jamie thanks for watching i wish you love and power your life make sure you like make sure you subscribe check you later